HCI Lesson 14 Feedback for Users Introduction All systems require feedback to monitor and change behavior. Feedback usually compares current behavior with predetermined goals and gives back information describing the gap between actual and intended performance. Because humans themselves are complex systems, they require feedback from others to meet psychological and cognitive processing needs discussed earlier in other videos. Feedback also increases human confidence. How much feedback is required is an individual characteristic. When users interface with machines, they still need feedback about their work is pro about how their work is progressing. As designers of user interfaces, systems analysts need to be aware of the human need for feedback and build it into the system. In addition to text messages, icons can often be used. For example, displaying an hourglass while the system is processing encourages the user to wait a while rather than repeatedly hitting keys to get a response. <clears throat> feedback needs to tell the user that these are the things the computer, the computer has accepted the input, the input is in the correct form, the input is not in the correct form, there will be a delay in the processing, the request has been completed or the computer is unable to complete the request and more detailed feedback is available and how to get it. So this will be discussed in detail in the next slides. So first is acknowledging acceptance of input. The first situation in which users need feedback is to learn that the computer has accepted the input. For example, when the user enters a name on a line, the computer provides feedback to the user by advancing the cursor one character at a time when the letters are entered correctly. A web example would be a web page displaying a message that your payment has been processed. Your confirmation number is 1234567. Thank you for using our services. That's an example of a feedback that acknowledges acceptance of input. So here are examples. So here, maybe once you enter the value, then it will display this message. Your bank transfer is being processed. Or even in uh, Microsoft Excel, if you click on this, if you type on the number, once you press enter key, then the number appears here. Th then that means that it is accepted by Microsoft Excel. Or if you write the formula here, so equal to R negative 2C plus R negative 1C, that's the two rows above and one row above, then it displays the, it displays the sum. Then that means you are sure that Excel acknowledged your input. So the in, your input was accepted by Excel. So that's already a feedback. Recognizing that input is in the correct form. User need feedback to tell them that the input is in the correct form. For example, a, a user inputs a command and the feedback states ready as the program progresses to a new point. A poor example of feedback that tells the user that input is in the correct form is the message input OK. So why is it a poor, a poor example? Because that message text access space is scriptic and does nothing to encourage the, the input of more data. So while ready says that it's ready to accept input, so it is encouraging the user to input more data. When placing an order on the web or making a payment, a confirmation page often displays requesting that the user review the information and click a button or image to confirm the order or payment. So there's a confirmation page. Here's an example. So once you click DIR in CMD or DOS in a pre, uh, command line operating system, then it will display the output. And then it will display the prop again. So that means it is now ready to accept next command. So if you see this prompt, then 
That means your input was acknowledged or is in the correct form. Then also, on the reverse, the computer should notify the input that the input is not in the correct form. Feedback is necessary to warn users that the input is not in the correct form. When data are incorrect, one way to inform the user is to generate a window that briefly describes the problem with the input and tells how the user can correct it. Notice that the message concerning an error in inputting the subscription length is polite and concise but not cryptic so that even inexperienced users will be able to understand it. The subscription length entered is wrong but the feedback given does not dwell on the user's mistake. Rather, it offers options 13, 26, or 52 weeks so that the error can be corrected easily. On the GUI screen, feedback is often in the form of a message box with an OK button on it. So here's the example on the uh, in there's a screen that was being talked about in this slide. So here there's a message saying that the subscription length you entered is not currently being offered. Please choose either 13, 26 or 52 weeks. So it will give you the suggestions. Here's another example of notifying that the input is not in the correct form. So I place here a command, which is actually wrong. So there is a message here telling that it is not a recognized internal command. Or here, maybe in Microsoft Excel, I entered the wrong formula. So it says here name. So that's already notifying that my form is not correct. And then it offers several actions here, which I'll be this uh, again uh, discussing on the next slides explaining a delay in processing and one of the most important kinds of feedback informs the user that there will be a delay in processing his or her request delays longer than 10 seconds or so require feedback so that the user knows that the system is still working so usually we see progress bars so these are examples of progress bars that will tell us that the system is still working rather than uh, thinking that uh, let's say for example the computer la uh, locked up or hang up or hang dead so these are progress bars and sometimes also just like for example in some installers because installation can take time um, some installers display examples or maybe even tutorials so that more or less the user knows that uh, the system is still working and of course coupled with a progress bar then next is acknowledging that the request is completed users need to know when their request has been completed and new requests may be input Often, a specific feedback message is displayed when an action has been completed by a user, such as employee record has been added, customer record has been changed, or item number 12345 has been deleted. So these are examples of acknowledging that the request is completed. So here's also an example. So BPI to GCash cash in receive, that's acknowledging that the request was completed so just try to imagine if we don't have this how will we know if let's say for example if we have a bank transfer or we transfer our money to another account how will we be sure that it was successful so we need some sort of a feedback here is also an example so analyzing that request is complete for example uh, we're going to add we're going to add a an employee so we have here a button so if you click on this button then it will display this uh, dialog then you can now enter values here so let's say I enter these values and that's it if I so that's already acknowledging the request because 
it shows the dialog box and it acknowledges the request that I am I would like to add a record. Notifying that the request was not completed. So again, it's also the reverse. If it is completed, we should have a feedback. If it is not completed, then there should also be a feedback. So feedback is also needed to, le to let the user know that the computer is unable to complete a request. If the display reads unable to process request, check request again. The user can then go back and check to see if the request has been input correctly rather than continue to enter commands that cannot be executed. So here's an example. Let's say I'm trying to add a customer. But the customer have an overview account. So press cancel to cancel transaction or OK to continue with the transaction. So this will display that the request was not completed, uh, was actually in entering a customer name. Offering the user more detailed feedback. Users need to be reassured that more detailed feedback is available and they should be shown how they can get it. Commands such as assist, instruct, explain, and more may be employed. Or the user may type a question mark or point to an appropriate icon to get more feedback. Using the command help as a way to obtain further information has been questioned because users may feel helpless or caught in a trap from which they must escape. This convention is in use and is in its familiarity to or users may overcome this concern. When designing web interfaces, hyperlinks can be embedded to allow the user to jump to the relevant help screen or to view more information. Hyperlinks are typically highlighted with underlining italics or a different color. Hyperlinks can be graphics, text, or icons. So here's an example of offering more detailed feedback. If you still remember, I've shown you this a while ago. So let's say for example, I entered an incorrect formula or maybe a function. So Microsoft Excel will show that it does not recognize the name. And if you click on this one, it will offer a lot of uh action that you can do so it just shows here the message and you can also click on this to uh, display help on this error or maybe it will show the calculation steps or you can ignore the error so it offers a lot of actions that you can do with this error so actually this is my formula here so it's actually wrong so including feedback in design <clears throat> it is well worth that the system analyst time to provide user feedback. If used correctly, feedback can be a powerful reinforcer of users' learning process, serve to improve users' performance with the system, increase motivation to produce, and improve the fit among the user, the task, and the technology. So here are a variety of help options. Feedback on personal computers has developed over the years. Help originally started as a response to the user who pressed a function key such as F1. The GUI alternative is the pull-down help menu. This approach was cumbersome because end users had to navigate through the table of contents or search via an index. Then, so to improve that, next came the context-sensitive help. Users could simply click on the right mouse button and topics or explanations about the current screen or area of the screen would be revealed. So some COTS software manufacturers call these cue cards. A third type of help on personal computer occur when the user places the arrow over the icon and leaves it there for a couple of seconds. At this point, some program pop up a balloon similar to those found in comic strips. This balloon explains a little bit about the icon function so here's an example if I place my mouse here on this icon for several seconds or maybe about two seconds it will display this one so it's a new slide and it's so it explains what is that icon is for so I'll slide to the and then 
if I need further help, I can press F1. So that's an example. So the fourth type of help is a wizard, which asks the user a series of questions and then takes action accordingly. Wizards help users through complicated or unfamiliar processes, such as setting up network connections or booking an airline seat online. Most users are familiar with wizards through creating a PowerPoint presentation or choosing a style for a word processing memo. So besides building help into an application, software manufacturers offer online help, either automated or personalized with live chat or helplines. Most customer service telephone lines are not toll-free, however. Some COTS software manufacturers offer a fax back system a user can request a catalog of various help documents to be sent by fax and then can order from the catalog by entering the item number which a touchstone with a touchstone phone so here's an example in the setup you can click on customer care and then here we can have here several so we have a help screen so that's an example of help. So we have here even the top questions. So if these are not the questions you're looking for, then you can scroll down and we have here several topics. Or you can just type here the topic that you would like to know. So these are our varieties of help options. So still you need help. So if you're not, uh, if you haven't seen, for example, uh, the things you would like to see in the help system then you can get in touch with them directly so you can chat or maybe you can use their phone numbers so finally users can also seek and find support from others other users through software forums this type of su support is of course unofficial and information thus obtained may be true partially true or misleading so here's an example i know you're familiar with stock overflow so if you can use stock overflow to look for or you know, ask for help so just like in this case how to fix 405 method not allowed so then somebody will answer that and then of course you can follow those answer or the answer of those who maybe answer this question so these are examples of feedbacks and thank you for viewing this video.